All right, so chapter 12, lesson three, is box plots. And sometimes you'll hear them be called, um, sometimes you'll hear them called uh, box and whisker plots, okay? Sometimes you'll hear them called, uh, be called box and whisker plots. And in this lesson, they're going to refer to them as box plots. So the table shows the number of touchdowns scored by each of the 16 teams in the National Football Conference in a recent year. The number one down here, it says plot the data on uh, a line plot. Okay, so when you plotted your data, that's what it looks like. All right, number two says find the median, the lower extreme, the upper extreme, the first quartile, the third quartile, uh, and the third quartile of the data, and place a star on the number line for each value. So the median was the middle number, right? The middle number in the set of data, and when we did that, we look at, we see that it would be uh, this number and this number. Let me let me point to it with with a pen. So we've got this one and this one. So when we add those together, 37 and 38, and divide by two, what did you get? There you go. And there is your. Oh, maybe I should just move it over so you can still see the work. Yeah. Then we want to find the lower extreme and the upper extreme. That's just the highest number and the lowest number. So you don't have to show any work there. What's the lowest number? 24. And the highest number? 54. Very good. Now we want to find the first and third quartile. Now remember, when you are looking for the first and third quartile, we had the median is right in the middle there, right? So now we have this number of data, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that means we're going to have two middle numbers again, right? So it's, which one? 1, 2, 28 and 34, right? 28 and 34. Those are the two middle numbers. So when we add those together, 28 and 34, and divide by 2, we get 31. And that's how we got that star right there. You got it? Then the third quartile, once again, we're looking at 1, 2, 3, 4, and this one over here. So it's 44 and 47, right? 44 and 47. So we are going to add those together, divide by 2, and what did you get? Very good. And those are your, um, those are the information, that is the information that we are going to need to create the box and whisker plots. So you know how to find that data, the median, the lower and upper extreme, the first and third quartile. Now I'll show you how to place it on a box plot. So now we're going to learn how to construct a box plot. Please make sure you write down the definition of the box plot. Okay, a box plot or a box and whisker plot uses a number line to show the distribution of a set of data using the, mean, uh, the median, the quartiles, and extreme values. A box is drawn around the quartile values, and the whiskers extend from each quartile to the extreme data points that are not outliers. Okay, so you see how here the um, it goes to the extreme data right here, but then if we're labeling an outlier, we out we label it with a star. Okay, or you can label it with a dot. Um, the median is marked with a vertical line, and the figure below is a box plot. So here, this is what the box plot looks like. Um, box plots separate data into four equal parts, okay, into four parts. Even though uh, the parts may differ in length, each contains 25% of the data. The box shows the middle 50% of the data. Now. This bottom part right here, it says 25, they each contains 25%. Now, the reason we can say that is because what does the median do to the data? Um, it cuts the data in half. So if it cuts the data in half, what percent of the data is right there? If it's in half, it's 50%, right? 
That's 50%. Now, if that's the median, and it cuts the data in half, how much of the data is over here? 50%. So, that's the median, it cuts the data in half, so there's 50% here, 50% here, right? What does the um, quartile 1 do to the, the bottom half of the data? It cuts it in half, right? So, that means that from here to here, I'm going to write it inside here. From here to here, since this cuts the 50% in half, how much, what percent is here? 25. 25%. Is everybody clear? Yes. And how many percent is here? 25. 25%. And same thing with the upper half. This quartile 3 cuts the upper half in half. So there's 25% here. And there's 25% in that teeny little piece right there. If you look at this is 25% here, and 25% here, and 25% here, and 25% here. They're all equal, right? 25% in each piece. But, uh, this piece is much longer than that piece. What's the difference? They still have the same amount of numbers in there, it's just when you have a shorter piece, all the numbers are clustered together. You see that? And when you have a larger piece, the numbers are more spread out. Very good. For this example, we want to draw a box plot of the car speed data. So you don't have to write this down. Just pay attention. Step one is to order the numbers from least to greatest. Okay, then we're going to draw a number line that covers the data, uh, covers the range of the data. So once we put the data in order from least to greatest, and you know, if you have a, 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 a good way to, what, what's a good way to put your numbers and organize your data? Using a stem and leaf plot. Very good. So we can do that. Um, but right now we're just going to talk about the data. So the first thing we want to do is we want to find the extremes the median, and the first and third quartiles. So now we have our data in order from least to greatest. So when we find the median, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, we're going to have the median is going to be 11 divided by 2 is 5 with 1 left over, right? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1 left over, my median is 25, just right there. You see? Now, once you find that median, if my actual median is one of the data values, which this is, right? If we had two middle numbers and we divided by two, is our median one of the data values? No. No. It's one, it, the median is somewhere in between the two, the two that we averaged, right? So here, we're not going to use that again. Okay, so now, one, two, three, four, five, now we have these numbers to use to find our quartiles. So, quartile one is 22. Quartile two is one, two, is 34. You see how we're doing that? Yep. And then our extremes, our extremes are 19 and 40. So, once we have those that data, 19 and 40, you're going to put, you're going to plot points above the number line, not on the number line. You got me? You're going to plot points above the number line. Okay? And then, I'm just going to show you on here. Then, you're going to draw lines. Just a minute. Then you're going to draw lines at each one. <coughs> of those um, parts. Does everybody see that? Yeah. Let me just draw a line with like this. So we're going to draw a line at each point like that. Oops, not at the last point, sorry. I missed me a mistake. Um, the three middle ones. You're going to draw a line like that at quartile one, the median, and quartile three. Then you're going to connect those 
lines. Everybody see how we're connecting them? And then you're going to connect your boxes to your extremes, and there you have your box and whisker plot. And that's what it looks like like that. All right, so let's do this one together. We want to draw a box plot for the data below. Now, the first thing we want to do is organize our data from least to greatest. So if you look here, the lowest number is 15, 15, and the highest number is 30. Okay. Yeah. So we've got, uh, no, not zero. We've got one, two, and three. So let's put these in order from least to greatest. So we've got 20, 25, 22, 30, 15, 18, uh, 20, 17, another 30, 27, and 15. All right, so now we have our data in order from least to greatest. So now we can find our median, lower and upper extreme, and our quartiles. So the median, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Thank goodness, it's 11 numbers. How many middle numbers do we have? One. one. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and one more is the middle number. So the median is not zero, it's 20. Very good. Okay, the lower extreme and the upper extreme are 15 and 30. Very good. So 15 for the lower extreme and 30 for the upper extreme. Okay. All right, that's upper extreme. And now we want to find our quartiles. So remember what I said, if we are using the actual median, I mean, actual data value, we're not going to use it again. So now we can look for um, our uh, quartile one. So that's one, two, and then one more. There's my quartile one. That's going to be 17. Then we've got one, two, and one more. That's 27. Okay? And it looks like we don't have any outliers, so we don't have to worry about that. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to plot the points on the number line, above the number line. So the median is 20. Plot your point. The lower extreme is 15. The upper extreme is 30. Quartile 1 is 17. So that's 15, 16, 17 is right there. Quartile 3 is 27, so it's 25, 26, 27, right there. So now we're going to draw a line. We're going to draw a line at the quartiles and the median. So there's quartiles, median, quartile. Okay? And now we're going to connect everything. Connect your boxes, make your boxes, and then make the whiskers. Is everybody with me? Now, when you make your box and whisker plot, I want you to make sure you label your data. So, this is 20 and that's the median. This is 17 and that's quartile 1. This is 27 and that's quartile 3. This one is 15, that's the lower extreme. 15, oh, I put the number on the top. And this is the upper extreme, and that is 30. So I want you to make sure you label with the actual value and what they are. So now we're interpreting data, okay? We are interpreting data. So here we have a box plot that talks about car speeds again. It says half of the, number two, half of the drivers were driving faster than what speed? Now, we know ha where the halfway mark is, right? What's the halfway mark? The median. the median. So here's the halfway mark. So we want to know um, 
half of the drivers were driving faster than what speed? So that would be what speed? 25 miles per hour. Does everybody see that? That's how you read the box plot. What does the box plot's length tell about the data? Okay. The length, now remember what I said about the length of the pieces or the side of the size of the pieces. So here, from uh, the quartile one to the median, those numbers are what? Closer together. together. The numbers from the median to the quartile three, they are further apart. It says here the length of the left half of the box plot is short. So that means that the speeds of the slowest half of the cars are all concentrated. They're closer together. The speeds of the fastest half of the cars are all spread out because this is a longer piece. Is everybody clear? All right. So here we have another, um, oh, this is still the driving one. Okay, this is the car speeds. Um, and I forgot to put my title up there, so it should say car speeds up there. What percent, What now we're talking about percents, what percent were dri uh, driving faster than 34 miles per hour? So 34, faster than 34 would be right here, right? So that would be 25%. No work. You don't need to show any work there. All right. Um, for this next example, example four, it says the box plot shows the daily attendance at a fitness club. Find the median and the measures of variability, then describe the data. So here, they've already found them. They've already drawn your box plot. Okay? So here, when we describe the data, it says the median is 72 and a half. 72 and a half. The first quartile is 65. There's 65. The third quartile is 80. The range is between 54, or is 54. The interquartile range is 80. Um, the interquartile range is 15. It's 80 minus 65. There is an outlier at 110. Both whiskers are approximately the same size, so the data without the, eyelid, the outlier is spread out evenly, okay, below the above um, quartiles. All right, example three says the number of games won in the American Football Conference in a recent year is displayed below. Find the median and the measures of variability, then describe the data. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to find the interquartile range. In order for us to find all of this information down here, we need to know our quartiles, our median, and our extremes, right? So looking at the uh, number line, the median is between 8 and 9, so that would be 8 plus 9 divided by 2, which is, or actually, not 8 plus 9, it's, it's right in the middle, so it's 8 and a half, right? So there's our median at 8 and a half, okay? Our quartile 1 is at Five and a half. Very good. And quartile uh, three is at 11. Okay, you see how we're labeling it with the, the value, the number, and what it is, right? And then the upper extreme is 13, and the lower extreme is 1. Okay? So we want to find the interquartile range. We want to see if we have any outliers, okay? So we want to find the interquartile range. That's the quartile 3 minus quartile 1. So when we do that, we have 11 minus 5 and a half, which gives me 5 and a half. So that's the interquartile range. Now we're going to find our quote unquote B. Okay? So to find B, we're going to take that um, 5 and a half and we're going to multiply it times 1.5. So we have 1.5 times 5 and a half, that's going to give me 8.25. What am I going to do with that B? We're going to use it to find our lower limit and our upper limit, right? 
So, to find the lower limit, we're going to take quartile 1, and we're going to subtract B. So that's going to be 5.5 minus 8.25. That's going to give me a negative 2.75. We writing this down? Then to find the upper limit, we're going to take quartile 3, which is 11, and we're going to add B to it. So that's going to be 11 plus 8.25, which gives us 19.25. So there's my upper limit and there's my lower limit. What does that tell me about outliers? Do I have any data that is beyond those limits? So what, what does it say? What do we know? No. There are no outliers. So we don't have to put a star up there, right? And then it says describe the data. And here is our description. It says the left side of the data is more spread out than the right side. Oh, is more spread out and the right side is more concentrated. Right? So when they say the left side, they're talking about the from the median to the left. See how it's bigger pieces? So they're more spread out. And then on the right hand side, see how they're smaller pieces compared to the left side? So they are closer together. All right. Ooh,